say that. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazzarelli. Here. Depenia. Here. Graziano. Here. Notari. Here. Robel. Here. Struvelberg. Present. Mayor Melman. Here. Sunshine notice. Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice that this meeting was published in the December 18th issue of the Star Ledger and in the December 20th issue of the Bubble Times. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Belleville Town Hall Bulletin Board and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of minutes. Regular meeting of February 26th. Make a motion. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli. Yes. Depenia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Natari. Take the report. Rovell. Yes. Jim Wilberg. Yes. Mayor Melman. Yes. For the manager. Yes, Mayor. Council. Uh, we had a, a clean to lean on 173 Floyd Street. It was a uh, property disrepair. We cleaned it, replacing the lean. Uh, we started our cleanup in preparation for baseball season. We were at the park ball, ball fields in town. Uh, we removed all the we buy house signs from all of Main Street, Washington nice. Avenue, Union nice. Avenue, Bellevue Avenue, the Division of Greylock. Uh, we trimmed various trees throughout the township. We patched about 11 streets. Uh, we had uh, several water main breaks, one on uh, Wood Avenue, uh, one on Fairway. We, uh, we installed a water service right across the street from Town Hall for the new Walgreens. We had a storm sewer repair on New Street. And we installed water services on Hornblower, Little, Davidson, and Wood. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Manager. <laughs> Next up, report of the Mayor. I'm going to do something a little different today. Uh, rather than give some bullet points that I usually discuss about the half of the week, I have some remarks that I've specifically prepared for tonight's meeting. Uh, so just to make it easier to follow, and you're just going to come down below and read it formally. <laughs> First, I'd just like to thank everybody for being here. We don't normally have this kind of a crowd, and I welcome you all here. Today's a very important day in, uh, in Belleville, and we have two items on the agenda today that's very vital, in my opinion, to the future of Belleville. So it's great that we put the call out for people that are interested in, in hearing what's going on, and that you're all here, especially the fact there's many people that are watching live, I'm sure. So with that being said, I just have some prepared remarks that I want to read. It's, a, it's an overview of maybe some of the things you're going to see, and I might be able to answer some questions for you right here and now that you might have uh, later on in the process. There are a lot of people interested in property tax relief. You see, property tax relief happens when you do one of two things. You either cut spending or you increase revenue. Sadly, up until now, the only source of increasing revenue to meet Bevel's budgetary needs has been you, the residential taxpayer. However, there is another way to increase revenue, and that's by allowing redevelopment of either contaminated or underutilized property so it generates a larger chunk of revenue. Property taxes are comprised of two assessments, land value and approved value. The land value is the cost of the land. The improvement value is the cost of the structure that's on the land. Vacant land only pays land tax. Therefore, it doesn't really generate much revenue at all. Regarding pilots, which is what we're going to hear a little bit about today, a pilot is an acronym for a payment in lieu of taxes. Today, we consider the final step in a very long process. Allow me to dispel the false notion that the mayor, the manager, or the council can just arbitrarily hand out pilots to any developer we want. We cannot. The process to offer a pilot program encompasses the council, the planning board, certified municipal planners, many public meetings, public hearings, and a very stringent public noticing process. The process is interchanged between the council and the planning board several times and includes an ordinance change in several declarations, all of which follow strict state protocols. The end result being a redevelopment area that has a redevelopment plan attached. The process takes so long that the two particular proposals on tonight's agenda actually began under a prior administration and received all the necessary votes to get us to this point. In order for a pilot to be considered, the property must already be in a redevelopment area that has a redevelopment plan adopted. After many public hearings, both properties on tonight's agenda meet this criteria. A pilot application 
for a proposed tax abatement is then submitted to the township and its professionals, and it must demonstrate that but for the tax abatement, the project would not proceed. The township is left with a decision to either let the property continue in its current state or enter into a pilot agreement which will generate more revenue than in its current state. As I mentioned, the property taxes are a combination of land taxes and improvement taxes, which are distributed among three entities, the county, the school district, and the municipality. So as an example, using the lot for tonight's self-storage facility, which is the subject of one of the pilots up for consideration tonight, that lot pays land taxes of $37,000 a year, split amongst three entities, the county, the school district, and the township. They each get their fair share. It's simply not true that the school district receives no money when the township enters into a pilot program. The school district continues to receive the proportional fair share of taxes. Keep in mind, land produces no school-aged children, yet the school district still receives their proportional share of the revenue. This is a fact. That's the land side of taxes, which does not change under a pilot. With regard to the improvement side, keeping with our example of the lot for the proposed self-storage facility, we already established it pays a land tax of $37,000, which is cut three ways. If we could somehow incentivize a developer by helping to make the development project financially viable, which means the bank will finance the construction, we can get improvements built on the property. If we get that, guess what? We receive much more revenue, which goes a long way to stabilizing property taxes. Thankfully, the state of New Jersey allows us to provide that incentive and it's called a pilot. Keeping with our example, the self-storage facility, once leased out, will generate $1.86 million in gross revenue and $3.7 million by the end of the term. This will provide escalating payments to Belleville of $185,000 and by the end of the term, $450,000 a year, of which we keep 95% with no impact to the school district. So currently the property yields $37,000 a year in land taxes, of which the municipality receives about a third. We get nothing for improvement because the land is vacant. If we incentivize the developer to build by easing and allowing the payments to scale up with growth, a project which wasn't financially viable now becomes viable and we receive more revenue. Compare that one-third of $137,000 now to one-third of $137,000 I'm sorry, to one-third of $37,000 plus the additional $185,000 a year early on and $450,000 a year by the end of term, of which we keep 95% for 30 years. Why 30 years? Our financial agreement states in year 26, Bell receives a pilot payment of $406,000. In year 27, we receive $416,000. In year 28, we receive $427,000. In year 29, $438,000. And finally, in year 30, we receive a $448,000 pilot payment. That's real money. These extra five years generate a whopping $2.1 million for Bell, for the township. If we reduce this pilot down to 25 years, we lose the revenue that we would only get our proportional share of the taxes approximately one-third of the traditional tax payment. That's why a 30-year pilot in this instance, in my opinion, works for Belleville. The second pilot application on the agenda tonight is for a project to be built in Silver Lake, right next to the light rail. This particular development, consisting mostly of studios and one bedrooms, is going to be marketed to recent college graduates and younger professionals who would benefit from the close proximity to the light rail and who typically live without children. Even though in this scenario, the township does consider children and school impact, keep in mind this project is mostly for studios and one-bedroom apartments. I took the liberty of, of researching our last multi-unit <coughs> residential project, which actually dates back 15 years, the Essex Park project on Franklin Avenue. The first thing you should know is that this is a gated community, a townhouse-style development, and it's not an apartment building, although the numbers are quite interesting. Essex Park contains 262 units, which as of last week, contains a total of only 19 children. 
That's only 0.07 students per household. That's not 0.7 students. That's 0.07 students. And again, keep in mind it's a gated community, a townhouse style development, not studios, not one bedrooms, which are currently being proposed in Silver Lake. Here's the important information. As for our tax collector, in total, Essex Park pays $1.14 million per year to the school district for a mere 19 students. That's a staggering $60,000 per child. <coughs> Keep in mind those 19 students are blended over three school types, elementary, middle, and high school. So if you're here today, you worry about impact to the school district, I hope you're now satisfied that one, most pilots are for commercial properties and have zero impact on the school district. Two, most modern residential housing projects produce far less children than you may have been led to believe. I think local realtors who may be in the room today wouldn't disagree with that fact. Lastly, if you're still worried about impacts to the schools, you should know that Belleville's top 20 taxpayers, 17 of them are commercial, meaning they produce not one child to the school district. You should also know that these commercial properties pay a total of $2.245 million a year to the school district. Again, that money is paid to the school district in exchange for zero students. Finally, just go outside. Drive around. Every other surrounding municipality has gone through a renaissance in the past decade. I'm tired of Belleville being left behind. I'm tired of the residential taxpayers footing the bill. All because we cannot attract major development projects because of our fear and or misunderstanding of pilots. A month ago in February, NJ Biz reported that Moody's increased Nork's bond rate. Mayor Ross Barack has specifically cited Nork's successful use of tax abatements. Jersey City has had so much success using pilots to develop their waterfront that a recent article stated the Fulp administration has been focusing its tax abatement policy away from Jersey City's downtown waterfront and toward the inner city. Today our choice is simple. If we do nothing, we let contaminated property stay, as is, and we continue to let our residential taxpayers foot the bill. Or we work with the development community. We offer them incentives to allow Bevel to move forward with cleaner land and, in my opinion, a windfall of revenue. In my humble opinion, this is a win-win for Bevel. Thank you. at the Belleville Public Library honoring Black History Month. The communication received from the Essex County Prosecutor's Office stated that they are sponsoring a gun buyback program on Saturday, March 30th from 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Bethany Baptist Church, Fellowship Hall, 275 West Market Street in the North. Ordinances? Ordinance number one for introduction. Ordinance of the Mayor and Council, the Township of Bevel County of Essex, New Jersey, adopting the Franklin Avenue and Mill Street Redevelopment Plan. Make a motion. Second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Mr. Pena? Yes. Graziana? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinance number two for introduction and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the <coughs> Bevel, Chapter 3 36.7, Storing of Damaged Unlicensed Vehicles. Motion. Motion. Second. second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Stephen Lilberg? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinances for public hearing, second final reading. Ordinance number one for public hearing, ordinance approving the financial agreement for long, long term tax exemption and buying between the towns for Belleville and ESHC storage of Belleville Urban Renewal LLC. Make a motion open the public. Second. Motion made in second to open the public participation. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mayor Melham? Yes. 
Before we, we uh, open up for public commenting on this particular ordinance, please know, I know there's a lot of new people that are here in the room. This is public commenting just on this proposed ordinance. If you're here for something else, you'll have your chance to speak during the public commenting portion of, of the meeting. But for right now, we're going to hear public commenting on specifically the ordinance that we're putting out today for second reading. Okay? Thank you. Mary? Mary Ross, on 5 Bell Street. Um, like I said, I listened to what you said. It sounds good about the uh, storage facility. But I don't see the benefits for the town because what's it going to create? Two, three jobs? And I could see a tax abatement, but a 30-year, I, I just can't digest that. There is a town ordinance, which I found on the website, that shows that you can give a five-year abatement, which I'm in favor of. So it's just state my opinion that I'm opposed to a 30-year abatement. Thank you. Can I I'll just ask a couple follow-up questions based on the uh, speech you gave at the beginning of the meeting? Uh, first of all, Actually, you, you, you cited if it relates, if it relates it does, specifically it, it to this relates pilot. To, to pilots and long-term tax abatement. So specifically on this project, though. Well, it, it has a direct tie to this. So let, me, let me just add. Sure. You don't want to answer the question. Fine, but you <coughs> you said at one point that the um, Essex Park tax abatement was it was been there was no tax abatement. Was no Essex Park. Park. It's no longer there, yeah, right? So when you no, said there, that there, there was never a tax abatement. Never a tax abatement. There wasn't. Uh, I thought there was in the beginning. No. All right. Because you had cited numbers of 19 students. I haven't bothered to check this year, but last year there were 26 students. Being 19 out. students was as of last week. Right. The other thing I, I wanted to mention, you met, you cited tonight and at the last council meeting, twice now you've quoted comments by Mayor Fulop of Jersey City as justification for the use of pilots or long-term tax exemptions in Belleville. And at the last council meeting, when you before you gave parts of Mayor Fulop's comments, you accuse certain members of the community of cherry picking. I think, in fact, you're guilty of the same thing because if you read the full statement given by Mayor Fulop, which you, you partially read into the record to last meeting. Mike, I'm going to ask you to just, just save that comment for fuller participation. It's got nothing to do with this particular pilot. It, it you does, can say it. Just it, say it, it during well, the comment. Because Mayor Fulop concludes so that remark it. by saying Fulop says they haven't issued any new long term tax abatements in about two years. And in fact, after, a week after he gave that, press announcement, he gave another one in which he said that when he ran for office five years ago, he promised to phase out reliance on tax abatements, and we accomplished that, and at this point, we haven't given a market rate abatement in nearly two years. So for you to say that he's shifting abatements from the waterfront to the inner I didn't say it, he said it. He had, didn't say that. He has said that he's just done just the opposite. He has stopped the reliance of tax abatements of Jersey City. It's not accurate. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Well, so, <coughs> sorry. As one of the original investors or developers in Bergen Lafayette, which is Mayor Fulop's considered uh, the worst part of Jersey City, that's exactly what he did. He gave out 30 year abatements for anybody around Wheaton Street, Bonham Street, anywhere around Liberty, uh, Liberty State Park. But what that basically did, it allowed the little guys, the little developers, to come in and piggyback Sir, on the bigger developments. I appreciate your comments. No. I want to need you to repeat them in public comment. No it's problem. not specifically on this ordinance. No problem. Anybody else? Mr. Frank Anton. Yeah, I'm against these uh, tax abatements, especially for the storage units, but we have several storage facilities in Belleville without tax abatements, and they're doing very well. Uh, this is a business that, why should we, the homeowners, mm -hmm. and the other business people have to subsidize uh, this uh, particular storage facility. It's a storage facility, it's a business, going to make a lot of money, because they need very little uh, manpower <coughs> to maintain it. So, we do not need to subsidize him. And, and look at the other ones, down the old Walton Centennial, he's been there for years. In Silver Lake, on Franklin Avenue, that storage facility has been Please there Please speak on years. this particular financial agreement, Mr. Franchenton. That's the storage facility. Financial agreement we're talking about today. The pilot. Yeah. That's a pilot, correct? It is. Well, well, I'm getting That's what I'm talking about. Point me. You don't need it. You have the other ones on there. So, you know, you like to talk about it. You talk about Essex Park and other things, but what you didn't bring up is they don't have enough parking. They're parking third, 20, Mr. Franklin, tell me you can speak about parking during right? public comment. And well, this is specific look, on the financial agreement of this order. Well, we want to the property development. So that's not the great... 
uh, uh, development that you seem to maintain uh, in your speech over there. So I hope the rest of your council people, that storage facility does not need a tax abatement, does not need we the taxpayer to subsidize that business. Thank you. Anybody else? Motion to close. Motion. Second. Motion made and second to close public comment and Kirk Colorado. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Schumelberg? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number one for final reading. Ordinance approving the financial agreement for long term tax exemption bond between the Towns of Belleville and ESHC Storage of Belleville Urban Renewal LLC. The motion. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? No, with a comment here. I, I agree kind of with Mario. My, my major problem is I like pilots, I just don't like 30 years. And uh, that's why I said no. Jamal Burke? No. I have a few comments. Traffic is, uh, I'm sorry. The storage facility is only creating two permanent jobs based on their applications. I am definitely against the 30-year abatement. Five years would be sufficient, so I vote no. Mayor Mellon. Absolutely. The ordinance is approved. Ordinance number two for public hearing. Ordinance approving a financial agreement for long-term tax exemption buying between the town of Bevel and Silver Lake Urban Union LLC. Make a motion open for public. Second. Motion made and second to open public comment. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Tupenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Schumelberg? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. <coughs> same thing, this is another pilot hearing, same rules apply. I need you to speak directly on this particular financial agreement. I'm yes? Back. I'm back. You're done. No, I'm back. Oh, you're back. <laughs> you can be back. <laughs> I think these are mostly questions that I'm, I will be asking you pertaining this particular development on Belmont Avenue, because um, like I said, I'm not privy to the documentation that you have, which I don't know how many pages are, since I, I never saw them, and so I'm just hoping that we can get some answers here, or maybe postpone this uh, till we get some answers. First of all, my question is, how many jobs for the community? If the market goes down, if we go into another recession, what happens there with the pilot program? What happens in a reval year? If people are behind taxes, how will that help them right now? In actual dollars, what would that, my question is, what would they be paying per unit in taxes opposed to a non pilot program? In other words, would they be paying $2,000 a unit? These are all the questions I have. We're in a prime area with highway transportation like rare like rail, that's why I'm in favor of a five-year program. <coughs> Who's going to pay for the additional infrastructure if there is any? If the property is sold, does the abatement follow the new owner? Okay, if the 30-year uh, program, what is going to be done with the excess money? Is it going <coughs> to stabilize the taxes for sure, or is it going to increase? Because I have never seen taxes go down. Has the governing body at any point in time, according to the uh, report that we discussed at one time in the state, have they sat, you sat down with the Board of Education to, to, to uh, discuss the possible impact on the school boards if they are not fully funded? Which brings me to a newspaper article in Jersey City last week that they're facing a $120 million budget shortfall. They got $27 million less for the state, and the city enacted a 1% sales tax to developers try to stop it. And the Board of Education member, which I have the article, if you would like, I would give it to you, uh, blame it on the pilot program. I don't know if that's true. All I can tell you is what I'm reading, and this is the information I have, and we're looking for additional information. And one of the things on why I'm against the pilot program is the Soho property received a 30-year payment, and now they're advertising clubs for apartments. I mean, that's like a slap in the face to the average taxpayer who's paying the bill. And another reason I'm here is the town website does not address all these issues. It just tells you about the pilot program. It doesn't give you the pros and cons. If I had that information, I wouldn't be here. And one more thing. I know it's going to sound a little crazy. But I know we're going to get hit with a rain tax. Are they exempt from it or are they going to pay it? <coughs> 
and one more thing. Will they be on the rent control? Okay. Well, my questions, and I don't think so. There's do. about 37 <laughs> questions from my account. <laughs> I know. Um, I, 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 probably half of them, I think, were addressed in what I spoke about. So when. I honestly, Mario, don't believe I'm going to say anything that's ever going to change your mind about this. Um, and being a realtor, I would have hoped that you would have been more open-minded to it. But you're not, and that's okay. I sat there and just explained how in year 26, 27, 28, the township of Belleville, with regard to just the self-storage project, gets three, four, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars coming into our budget. So to sit there and say that you're not for a 30-year means that you're not necessarily for our revenue. With regard to the school children, listen, all I can do is point to Belleville examples. Essex Park is a gated community, townhouses, and as of last week, the school district has 19 kids there. So the argument for impact to the schools, in my opinion, in this particular case, is negligible. Also factor in the fact that, I'm repeating myself, but our commercial taxpayers, 17 of our top 20 commercial taxpayers pay $2.2 million a year in taxes that all go to the school district. So I'm not really worried about overwhelming the school district with one development because Essex Park has 19 and it's blended over three different school districts, elementary, middle. It's negligible, plus they're paying about $60,000 of kids. The nice part about a pilot, if anybody here that's a homeowner, you have taxes and from time to time you might go for a tax appeal and try and, and argue with the tax assessor or the county tax board, there, this is a contract that we're signing with them. There are no tax appeals because this is a payment in lieu of taxes. So that money that they're paying us as they scale up, as they rent out more, we truly believe, and we did something very groundbreaking, our professionals that are sitting here in the front row, we did something groundbreaking in these pilot negotiations. We have what's called upside protection. It really, I believe, uh, Mr. Banker might be applying to the league municipalities to have an article placed there because as they as rents increase, because we believe in Belleville and we believe in Silver Lake and we believe in building studios and one bedrooms right next to the light rail, we believe that they're going to do well. And as they do well, and as they charge a little more money for rent, we get more money from that. So these are the bottom line prices that we get. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to us. I've never guaranteed anybody that we're going to reduce your taxes. I'm merely trying to stabilize your taxes. We haven't been able to do that in more than a decade because we haven't built anything. I'm sorry to say, we haven't built anything. Essex Park is 15 years old. 15. We haven't built anything. If we don't build things, guess who's going to pay the bill? You are. We have to get more development in this town. Every other town has been successful using pilots. Every other town's been successful using pilots. Anybody else? Mr. Frank Antonio. Let me say other towns, but I want you to take a look at Montclair. They notified they got all that development. Talk to realtors up there trying to sell homes. People are moving out of homes. Mr. Frank Antonio, please speak on this particular financial <laughs> yes, agreement. Yes, it's, it's about pilots, okay. what they're doing uh, to these towns. Bloomfield, too, gave all these pilots. Go look at Bloomfield Center. That used to be the shopping hub of suburban Essex. Look at all the vacant stores in Bloomfield Center. And these millennials, you know, while you talk about these millennials with no children, yeah, they might take a bus or train it to New York. And they spend their money there. They don't shop our local stores, right? And if you keep bringing up Essex Park, it's, you know, this is not the, the great uh, project that you talk about. I've read a couple of uh, financial agreements, the, the one on Terry Street and all that. The developers' own words, they're making like 2.1, uh, projected that 115 unit, if you ever build it, going to make $2.1 million in product. That's a different Why project, Mr. Why are we Mr. subsidizing him? That's it? a different project, Mr. Well, Frank. we don't, this, we, this has got to stop all over the state. I brought your article to have right here. The state now is in trouble from giving all these uh, developers tax uh, uh, reductions and, and incentives and all that. Thank you. Uh, other towns are suffering it too. Why are we going there? Thank you. And I ask you other council members, please, you know, the two of you that voted no on the other one, these tax abatements and, and the other article I have, I'll read it later if you want. Rental properties, <coughs> the bubble is breaking. They've built too many, and the rents are too high. There's not that many people who can afford $2,600, $2,800 for a two-bedroom apartment. 
So please, stop. Let's not get in on the bottom floor when the, all the rest of them are caving in. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blaine in the back? I'm sorry. Mayor I'll, I'll, I'll get you next. Dan D'Elia, 25 Belmar Street. I want to say I think this is a great idea. Okay, As a new homeowner, also someone who was literally raised in the town, uh, and two council members, thank you for voting no. That was really a nice, wise decision to let everyone understand why the town has been so stagnant. Because for the guys, who, for those of you who are not aware, they were on the previous council. And as you can see, the past amount of years has been stagnant. Mr. Francis, Tony, to respond to Ms. you, Ms. Can I just I pause for one second? This, this is related, I promise. Okay. If not, you can it is related. make your comments in public comment. I, I promise it's related. Okay. As, far as, as far as pilots are concerned, they are great. Most of the time, if you are looking around and you're shopping somewhere, you're probably not shopping in the building because we don't have mixed-use properties, at least not up to date. So most of us shop out of town. How do we get millennials to come in? How do we get people higher paid, better jobs coming from the city? This is the opportunity itself. I didn't know until about two years ago we had a light rail. I had no idea we had a light rail in Belleville, and I've lived here pretty much my whole life. Okay, Now that's strange. I did not know. So I think this is a great idea. This is going to be able to be very appealing to many people. It's going to allow it. I think it's a great idea. And as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, as a, um, us to allow to have money coming in, right, and on the back end even bigger. So it's a win-win situation. I think it's a great idea. Anybody else? Mr. Sheldon? Uh, before I comment on this particular uh, tax exemption, could you just clarify one thing? You, I think you've repeated it twice. You said that the 17 highest corporate taxpayers of Belleville Pay two point one or two point two million dollars, and I think in, in the last version you said all of that goes to the school system. No, I did not say that. I, I think you. Did. I think you said it all goes to the school system. Yeah, okay. I'll check. But I, I think what you meant to I say. Actually, believe it. You are right. <coughs> you are right. I added. I took the top twenty taxpayers in Belleville. Corporate yeah, tax. Uh, well, top twenty taxpayers. Top 20 taxpayers, the tax assessor's office, tax collector's office, gave me a list. Mm -hmm. Top 20 taxpayers in Belleville. Of those 20, 17 of them were commercial. And when you add up the tax they pay for land to Board of Ed and improvement value for Board of Ed, it ends up being whatever number I said. 2.1 uh, or 2.2? 2.1. And right. how, right. how it's a of those numbers in front of you. How much does the town hall get? I don't have, actually, I don't have the numbers. I don't have the chart in front of me. But, you, but the, out of every dollar, approximately about 45 cents of every dollar goes to the school system, mm -hmm. uh, and the larger part of the pie goes to the town hall. So if the Board of Ed is getting 2.1 or 2.2, it's, it's the town not, hall. No, it's, it's not really thirds. The county gets the smallest portion, and then it's pretty close to what the school, the school district gets a little more, actually, than the municipality does. As far as this long-term tax exemption is concerned, let me first say that I'm not opposed to development when it's meaningful and justified. I'm in favor. We were at the zoning board meeting last week, and I supported the uh, restaurant that's going to be built on Union Avenue. My concern, my objection to this project, which is only being made possible through the long-term tax exemption, is the contamination on that site. And you have every right to speak on that, Mr. Sheldon. Just wait for public comment. But, but I, I want all of you to know and acknowledge that the Sierra Club, which is a very credible organization, has officially expressed opposition to this project. I would very much love to read into the record the two salient you comments. You can do that during public comment. That's well, fine. it's kind of after the fact. You know, it's it's it, it, it's going to be too late. Well, at that yeah, point. but it's not about the pilot. So it's it, about well, the contaminant. There have been probably 16 to 18 months worth of public hearings between the council and the planning board, back and forth, back and forth, notices, public hearings, notices, public hearings. You had, I was here when the Sierra Club was here. They've had their chance to speak. The planning board voted. The council has also voted. That's That time has passed. We're now here talking about the financial agreement, which is the last portion of this project. There were two hearings on this project in March and April of last year. To be honest, I can't remember you being present. If you were, I, I apologize if you were in the back, because I know it as the as the municipal election was underway, excuse me, I'm just getting over flu from two weeks ago. The, I know that you, you were coming to some meetings during the campaign there. process. But how many of the other members of this council, I don't remember anyone else on this council being present at any of those the, meetings. The nice part about that is that we s select and appoint a planning board, and they're autonomous, they're separate, and they do their job, and then they send the cases back to us, and then we do our job. They've done their job. The previous <coughs> council, many of the people that you supported, also voted for this project in the early stages to get it to the planning board. 
now went to the planning board. There were multiple public hearings, notices, all that stuff. Now it's back here for us to do our job, which is to hire professionals and to negotiate the final portion, which is the pilot. Can I ask, of the seven members of this council, how many of you have either looked at the video or read through the full transcript? And Mr. Graziano has got it here with him. Okay, so you, you, you will go on record saying you are fully aware of all the environmental Mr. issues. Mr. Sheldon, you can definitely say this at public comment. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Sheldon? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Fleischman. Just a point of order, sir. This is the final thing with this project, am I correct? After the long-term the long -term tax exemption is done, this council is done with any part of the project, am I correct? There's nothing else you guys have to do. This council, though, I think it's all planning. If this is all planning, it's all planning board. It's all planning. Okay, so basically, when public comment comes up, it's basically the the horse at the horse out of the barn by that time. Well, well no, because right. we're voting on the pilot. You can speak right now on the pilot. Not the pilot. So go ahead. I I've, I've already said everything I need to, but I just wanted to be sure that everybody had an opportunity to speak about this. They've had about a year and a half to speak about it at multiple meetings. Okay. Thank so you. don't advertise the fact that you can say it during public comment when this is already been figured out, okay? Well, you can speak on public comment on anything you want. I understand that. This but is the public this is, this is basically done now. That's what I'm understanding. I'm sorry, Mr. This is basically done except for the, except for the LTTE agreement. Am I, am I correct? For this body, yes. Okay. I've said everything I need okay. to. you got to do what you need to do. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Motion? Motion. Can I get a second on that? Tonight? Second. We have a motion and a second to post public comment. First call the roll. Council Member Cazzarelli. Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Gravel? Yes. Schumlo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number two for final reading. Ordinance approving the financial agreement for long term tax exemption by and between the Township of Bellable and Silver Lake Urban Renewal LLC. Get a motion? Motion. We have a motion? Second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazzarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Again, I'm, my main concern is not the pilot. It's the term of the pilot. And I did get a chance to meet with Mayor Phillip and his people. So to me, it's, you know, 25, 30 years is just too far out for me to project when we can't even figure out what's going to happen in the next five years. So I say no. Stream a I have a few comments to make. Number one, the traffic in Silver Lake is horrendous on Belmont Avenue and Franklin Street. Contamination is not being remediated, but being capped, which may result in health problems in the future. 30-year abatements are too long. Five years are acceptable based on our own town ordinance, Chapter 33. Prime real estate next to the light rail does not need a tax abatement. Taxpayers are paying 100% while developers are not paying their fair share. In the first 30 years of the tax abatement, the developer will be paying no more than 40% of what the actual taxes should be on the average. Parking will be charged for the residents on the pro of the project according to your application for tax exemption. The architect of the neighborhood is only three stories high. This project is five stories high. My decision is based on speaking with my constituents. Now, I'm not against development, but I don't want to give away the store. Thank you. I said no. I'm sorry. Yes. Number three for a public hearing and ordinance to amend revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-6A, stop sign intersection designated. Make a motion open for public session. Motion made, second, clerk, roll. Uh, Council Member Cazzarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jermaine yes. Lilburg? Yes. Mayor Melhead? Yes. Congratulations. Mr. Gardercio. Yes. Jerry Gardercio by Grove Street. This ordinance was introduced, if I'm not mistaken, last August. And it never came up for a second hearing. And at the time when it came up, I talked to Councilman Graziano about it, and I gave my concerns about it. And then when it never came up, I thought it had been withdrawn. Now I find it on the agenda seven months later. My concerns over this ordinance is because 
Liberty Avenue is very high grade. It goes up, very steep, going from my block, which is Grove Street, up to Franklin Avenue. Very similar to Girolamo going up the same way. When it snows in the winter, until it's plowed and there's salt on Girolamo, you have cars that when they stop because it gets backed up in traffic at the rush hour, what happens is when they go to go again, they got slide, they go sliding all over the place. Completely out of control that sometimes people even have to come over and help push the cars. And that's a wide street. Now this is a very narrow street. When you go up this street, if you stop at Hill Street, you're going to get stuck there. You go to go again, and you could be sliding sideways the same way. You could even slide backwards at the cars that are behind you. To me, this is a very dangerous ordinance to be introduced by this, by this board. What happens is there is a stop sign from both sides of Hill Street. To me, this is overkill to add a third stop sign on Liberty. Believe me, going up that hill, I've gone up it a lot of times. If you stop there, that you don't continue the momentum in a snowstorm, you're going to get stuck. There's times that I get to the top and it's a little, it's a little bad, but you could pull out fast, uh, not faster, but further up before you stop because on the top of Franklin Avenue, it's more level and also it goes straight after that and you have enough space to pull up because of the cars that are parked on either side, so it gives you more space. But this, I feel this is unsafe and it should be denied. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, I know Councilman Graziano's got a comment. Just so you know the origin of this, I too questioned how it disappeared for seven months, but it made it back. Oh, by the way, the, stop, the sign is up already, even though you didn't pass it yet. So, the, uh, <laughs> we, did, we did pass it on first reading, you're right, a while ago. Uh, just so you know the origin of that, we don't necessarily drive around the side and put stop signs anywhere. A bunch of residents in that area petitioned us, signed letters, petitioned us, came to us, appealed to us in public commenting, and those residents in the neighborhood wanted it. We then directed that to the police department. The chief is always in our in our audience. He had his traffic people look at it, and we rely on their recommendation on whether or not something deserves a stop sign or not. Whether or not when it snows, and in you know in that time when it snows, is it? I'm sure that the police department has already factored that in, but we don't arbitrarily make these decisions. We get recommendations from our traffic department. To tell you how Graziano. dangerous it is, at one time that was a two-way street. And they stopped it from being a two-way street because in the winter, when cars would go down that street, they would lose control mm -hmm. because of how steep it is. But they corrected that, though. Yes, by changing it to a one-way. But this will now cause the problem of getting stuck when you go up the hill now. Okay. Mr. President? Yeah, so if I may, so Mr. Gersh, I, I hear what you're saying, but I've, I lived on uh, Hill Street for 28 years now, I believe. And I'm right on the hill. Uh, with all due respect, I haven't had any time, any problem pulling out with a two-wheel, four-wheel drive, whatever. But the concern comes in with my with our neighbors. Uh, be it a one way, I have people coming <coughs> down it, <laughs> and I'm right, I'm right in the middle, right. So I get people. There. I'm sorry. I said you live there. I live there. I get people coming flying up the hill, not stopping at the stop sign. Kids, and we have young children around, and that's that's the communities. Fear, right? As long as they're going to see a stop sign, and I hear you, maybe stopping when it snows for a little part of the, the year that we do get it, uh, it's the children that are at risk because the cars are not stopping. But with the signs there, they are stopping, and it is helping. And the, the kids do actually, the kids do stop. They see the signs and look for the cars. They do that. So I hear you. I hear both sides of it. But from the child, from the children, I, I actually like the fact. So Thank you. the study was good for. All right, we have a motion to close public. Motion to close public. Second. Motion made and second. Close public. Third call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Pena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Ventura. Yes. Rogel. Yes. Rogel. Yes. 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 Yes.
Make a motion to move for final adoption. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazzarelli? Yes. DePena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? My concerns are, are as you say, Jerry, but I'm going to defer to, to Councilman Graziano this way because he lives there, so I'll vote yes. Strunel Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. If there's ever a problem, we'll have the traffic department look at it again. Yeah. How about we defeat this one? Is that what you want to do? Let's see if we can pull it to So we're going to make a motion to pull it off the table? Yeah. We still have to have a public hearing. Take it off the table. Yeah, we will. We will. We'll just let it Ready? No, no we're, we're going to leave it. Leave, leave it? Yeah. Okay. Very good. I, 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 I need a motion for open public comments. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to open up for public commenting. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazzarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jim Luber? Yes. Mayor Benley? Yes. Motion to close public comment. Mr. Shelton. Good evening. Michael Shelton, 47 Floyd Street. Um, just want to go back to something that was said at the last council meeting uh, when, it, when uh, Mayor Melham went on record saying that the board was getting an additional $2.36 million in state aid and that you were going to explore with uh, Dr. Tomko any way of, of sharing. That money was not found money, discovered money. It's money that has been promised to the district by Governor Murphy, monies that have not been properly given to underfunded districts like ours. Uh, since 2008 or 2009, uh, I don't think it would be legally possible for the town hall to even think about asking for that that money. I don't think it's illegal to ask a question. Well, but I don't think it, that's money that was specifically. You're talking. You asked if the board might possibly defer a referendum fund transfer from the town hall to the board of education. That money is raised explicitly for the purpose of serving the debt on the referendum, something that the voters, that you have no right trying to intercede there and holding on to that money. That's money that is belongs to the Board of Education and not the Town Hall. In any case, I, I have the video clip and I send it to our Board Council just so that he's aware of this matter, just in case. You also um, made a comment at the last meeting that the referendum <coughs> is costing Belleville residents anywhere from 200 to $350 a year. That's not true. For the median assessed home, which is now $276,000 following the reval, the referendum surcharge remains $152. In fact, as soon as the reval was done, I immediately forced Dr. Tomko and our bond council to change the tax tables so that everything would be readjusted. Otherwise, the reval with the median assessed value going to 278 would have inadvertently resulted in an increase of about $30 on the referendum. That's, that's been fixed. And by the way, in order for someone to be paying $200 for the referendum surcharge, you would have to have a median assessed home value of $362,500. Should we do an informal poll here to who's got a house that's $360,000? Probably not very many. But I, it's don't, I disagree with you. Well, not single family, maybe two family. But I just, in order to I pay $350,000. Should we do it, Mr. Graziano? I'm with okay, you. Okay, I'm there. Congratulations. Councilman? I'm there. Councilman? Councilwoman? Okay. But in order to pay $350, as you stated as the upper range, your your assessed value would have to be $634,300. And I doubt there are very many single family homes approaching that. Uh, by the way, as far as budget matters are concerned, the Board of Education is having a public work session tomorrow night, starting at 7.30 at the high school, uh, at the senior cafeteria lounge. We're having an open forum, an open work session, so community members can contribute to this budget process. This may be the first time in the history of Belleville the Board of Education has ever had a work session solely for the purpose of having community participation in the budget. So I'm hoping everyone, including the council members, will be in attendance. Do you have a preliminary number on what the increase might be? Right now, we're looking at $2.5 million. It would Percentage-wise, what percentage? About two do, $200. A no, percentage. Is it 2% increase? It's no, a 5%. 5.03, 5, 5, 5. 5. 5. 5. I believe, is the exact percentage. But it's important that we all yeah. wow. all participate in this, this matter. Several board members have already gone on record saying that we're opposed to this tax increase. But we don't want to make any draconian measures. We don't want to start trimming staff members or cutting back services. 
we're hoping tomorrow night we'll all be able to reach some common ground and figure out what we can do to trim this budget Thank to keep the tax increase. We need you to wrap up. All right. Finally, what I want to say is I, I wasn't allowed to make I read into the record the Sierra Club's official protest against the Belmont project, but I'd like to just read two salient comments, and I think Councilman Burke referenced some of these in her, her comments. First, this is Jeff Tittle, the president of the New Jersey Sierra Club. We are gambling with people's future. The toxic site will not be safe enough to even work on. Soil and groundwater samples taken from the Belmont Avenue property indicated higher than standard levels of toxic metals like arsenic, mercury, and lead. In fact, those levels range from 150 times safe of values for iron, 100 times for aluminum, 20 times for mercury, 16 times for arsenic, and 15 times for lead. He then finishes his official protest against this project by saying, the plan encourages overdevelopment on a toxic site that has not been properly cleaned up. It would allow toxic contaminants to be capped in the ground. Count picking will fail and will put more people at risk. Development on the site would also increase runoff and flooding to surrounding areas. So I'm asking you, I, I, to be perfectly honest, I accept for you, I doubt that, and maybe Mr. Graziano now, you have a copy of the, the transcript, but I doubt very many of you have made a full study of the testimony for this and are fully aware of the contamination. I ask that you do your homework, realize the extent of what is being the, the, the contamination that's being built over and what this means to future generations of, of residents, not only the people that are going to be living on that site, but people in the surrounding area. And yeah, to consider to up, a motion to reconsider this tax abatement, because without it, this project would not be done. Thank you me. want to do it the right way, have the developer completely remediate the site. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Frank, Yeah, I see a little friend who attacked me uh, left. He came here to make his little speech. Uh, just for the record, I know his family for 50 years. His yes. father called me many times, sent me two letters thanking me for the way I represent the people of uh, the township of Belleville. And then he has the audacity. He lives here, he knows Belleville and everything. And he's surprised tonight to find out that Belleville has a light rail. For over a year and a half, it was front page news, it was discussed at meetings. So that shows how active your little friends are involved in the family and, we don't need and how knowledgeable they are. <laughs> At the last meeting, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman uh, Graziano, you were talking about meters. Yeah. Uh, I've asked the prior council, which four of them are sitting here many times over here, uh, as a businessman and property owner on Washington, we have meters in front we have to put up with. From Greylock to the Nutley border, there are no meters. Those businesses, those residents, park there for free. I asked for many years, you want to increase revenue rate? But you can get 150 to 200 meters on that of length of road. So let's see if that can be done. <coughs> no, it's not. The other side says okay, but I've been saying it for years, and all we do is get, yes sir, yes sir, and no action. Um, in regards to the um, uh, development, you said there's no development. It's been 13 or 14 years we've had a ton of projects. It turns out a lot of these developers, and some of them are your donators uh, to your campaign, Mr. Mellon, uh, William and Washington was approved over a dozen years ago for 80 units, okay? What how long ago did it get built? <clears throat> well, the how, how long ago did it get built? The reason is why these are not good projects. When you're going to build from the sidewalk to one foot through the parking line, the banks are saying no. It's okay for you and the plan to board their approval. The guys, the banks will loan the money. These are not practical projects. We had 38 units approved on Rutgers Street, where the Parks Authority is there. That was never built. 60 units uh, were School 1. We gave School 1, and again, the four city council people from the previous unit gave it away to the Board of Education for a dollar, we give it, that was the number <coughs> All right? We've got projects all over that were approved. One of the reasons I keep saying, you've got to study the geography of Belleville. These banks know we're a landlocked community. Anybody in this room has lived here over the last three years, if they know what's happened to Belleville Avenue, it is a virtual parking lot. Banks don't make decisions now, based upon landlocked. They make now, business decisions. Day. 
Well, no, a practical development has to be practical so it can produce. It has to be financially and viable. And uh, at the last meeting, I think on the agenda was uh, going to private uh, section for litigation with the library. I think you corrected that it wasn't litigation. You said it should be slash. So it wasn't litigation. It's not. Well, then why did you go to private session if it wasn't litigation? We're negotiating. Negotiating? It's, it's a public building. Why couldn't it be done in public? It's negotiation prior to potential lawsuit. Attorneys are already involved. And, and can we know what you're trying to get from the library? Sure. They owe us about $400,000. On what basis? basis that usually Belleville bills them about $40,000 a quarter, I'm using round numbers. Belleville used to bill them about $40,000 a quarter, and they used to reimburse us. They used to pay us back. Bill them for what? For payroll and whatever some of the services. Payroll, pension. Payroll, pension. Medical, right. Health and insurance. And we, we, give them, we give them their allocation of money every year. So that's by law 1%, whatever it is. We were paying some well, bills. You don't, you don't give them the state. It's mandated. Dictates that percentage. Yes, yes. Mr. Frank, that's time. Do you want an answer or do you want to play games? So well, it's one percent. You, know, you, you don't answer people when they speak, and then after you tell us you shut up, and, and you make these statements that are full of error. Try to answer you. Try to answer you. Now, just, just understand one thing. You're only elected by 40% of votes. 60% of people have voted for you. Thank you, Mr. You Frank Antonio. What Mr. Kind of, Frank Antonio, your time is up now. What kind Thank of you. council manager government? You are not the strong mayor of former government. Thank and you, I Mr. wish the rest of you council people were control. You're out of order. Mr. Frank Antonio, thank you. Your time is up. Sir? <laughs> uh, Don Rinaldi, um, my family started moving to Belleville back in the 50s. Shh. Mr. Right. Frank Antonio, please, we're having public comment. No, you tell him to shut up. Okay, Mr. Frank First of all, I didn't vote for the mayor, but I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, we started a business organization in the Valley. Vic, some of you knew about it. And it's coming from here. I got sick, we, but we're, we're back, and, and, and we're going to try to help the town. But today, when I found out about this meeting, I called about 30 some odd businessmen in the valley. Everyone is definitely in favor of development. It's going to ignite Belleville. It's going to be our lifeblood. And, and I'm really happy to see that you're all getting along. Marie, I know you voted no, and Steve, you voted no, but at least you're agreeing. And it's really a pleasure to see you working together. But Thank as a businessman in Nutley, and we pay a lot of taxes, development is the only way to go. Thank you so much. You've got to Thank you. Anybody else? I have uh, two questions because I'm confused about what they are. One is resolution number five, the resolution deferring the local school tax, and the other one is resolution number 13, authorizing the advertisement of bids for the removal of dirt for the township of Belmore. I've never seen this in all the years of a removal of dirt. That's I'm wondering where this is supposed to be. we never removed dirt before. <laughs> well, where are you removing the dirt is my issue. If my you question. drive down the DPW yard, it's about four stories tall. Ah, okay. Hey, what's the other one about Mr. Is there a Tucci? Number five, please. Uh, this is a deferred, uh, uh, deferred school tax. This is based upon the recommendation of our auditors. All right, we do this, we do this resolution every year. It's standard. It's not a okay. Right. It's a okay. standard procedure. Mayor, in the back. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, is it okay for me to raise the safety concern that's taking place on Parkview Avenue or Belleville Avenue? Sure. This is public commenting. You have five minutes to speak and really anything you want. Thank you very much. I'm here with my husband and several um, other neighbors that are from Parkview Avenue, and we're here to express our serious concern about the high speeding that's taking place on our streets. And our concern is that we have children, and children with disabilities, as well as elderly people, family members, that we are concerned that one day they're going to get hit by these cars that are racing down the street. They're going 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, and even higher. So we're calling it to your attention that this is taking place on Parkview Avenue. And Parkview Avenue is right across from the entrance of Belleville Park, as well as also um, it leads to into the parking lot for the Woodlands. So the car goes zooming down and into that parking uh, space for the Woodlands. 
And not only that, when they come out of the woodlands parking space, they go the wrong way because our, our street is a one-way street. So we are asking for two speed humps to be placed. This is the second time that we are calling this matter to your attention. A letter was written by one of our neighbors, Tom, um, who has a son, and he can speak for himself. And uh, we are asking for your assistance. Please help us. Thank you. So let me just say one or two quick things. One, thank you for being here. Uh, I always encourage, I'm very accessible. People find me on Facebook, they find me on Instagram, they send me emails, they find me uh, messages. We have somebody that works in the office that returns all phone calls. So I'm, I'm grateful that you're here, but in the future, you don't have, we only have two meetings every month. So you could always just directly communicate. The police chief is here today, and I'm certain he's already wrote this down. We can definitely have a traffic detail there and do some speed enforcement. I think on the agenda today, we have a resolution for distracted drivers and stuff. We do programs like that in the spring and summer. Um, I don't think this one's on the agenda for tonight, but cops are people in the crosswalks. We will, the chief, I'm certain, already wrote that address down for the street down. I did as well. And you picked an easy day because we have a lot of police officers here as well. So we'll definitely pay attention to it. Um, speed humps are a little different story. Uh, everybody wants a speed hump. Uh, I live on a street that is probably one of the fastest streets in Belmont. Everybody wants a speed bump. I wish I can give everybody a speed bump. When I brought this up to the chief, he makes a compelling argument that speed humps not only speed slow down drivers, but they also slow down emergency response vehicles, police and, and ambulances. Uh, so we think that we can deal with that with more enforcement. We could put a ghost car there. We could do a couple different things, and we're, I'm sure that the chief and our traffic department will, will, will work with you. And if, if it's not working out, you contact us again, and we'll, we'll, take, we'll take another look at it. But thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Well, we're good. Mr. Fleischman? Frank Fleischman, 132 Franklin Street. <laughs> First of all, Councilman Rovell, Councilman Burke, thank you. Okay. Remember, Marie, you pleasantly surprised me. I mean, when we first talked about this, that sort of thing, you gave me a certain view of it, that sort of thing. I didn't agree with you, that sort of thing, but it looks like you changed your mind. So thank you very much. And Steve, thank you as well. Obviously, I am not someone who was in favor of this, even when it was in front of the planning board. Okay. And I do see that there's a lot of people here who probably support this, that sort of thing. It's not easy to get up and be in the minority, that sort of thing, but sometimes you have to tell what you think is the truth. And the truth to me is that this proposal is bad. Bad, bad, bad. The first thing I'll say is that my wife and I have lived in that neighborhood maybe 250 feet from that property for 22 years. Okay, We've seen the traffic. We've seen the accidents. We've seen the congestion. And I don't want to hear that this, that this proposal would simply be people who are going to use the light rail. That, I, I can't accept that at all. Someone's going to have cars. Someone is going to have some sort of transportation, and it's going to bring more cars into that neighborhood. Never mind the fact that the construction vehicles that are going to be involved with this are going to be going down Franklin Street, Belmont Avenue, that sort of thing, and degrading further our streets. Okay? That is unacceptable. We have aging infrastructure. Our roads, our, our sewers, our water mains, they're all failing. And they have more traffic on, on those streets? No, 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 no. Secondly, the contamination. I understand that we've had experts here to say, well, it's going to be taken care of, it's going to be capped in place, the DEP is going to be monitoring that sort of thing. Forgive me for, forgive me for being cynical, but we live in New Jersey, and not, not, not a day goes by when we hear some sort of scandal with our state agencies. I don't trust them as far as I can throw a piano at times. Okay. The fact that they're going to cap it in place and put people on that property? No, I'm sorry. I, don't, I really don't believe that capping contamination in place is a good idea. If I heard, well, we're going to remove it all, all right, maybe I would have been a little more in favor of it. 232 units? No. Okay. Retail commercial? Great. Pinnacle Development has done great stuff in Montclair, 
And I've been, I've been hanging out in Montclair since I was 13 years old, so I've seen all the changes, that sort of thing. They did great with the Wellmont Theater. They, they basically took an abandoned movie theater, made it into one of the best venues in this area. I would put it against <coughs> Urban Pack or NJ Pack any day of the week. Okay? Pinnacle has a great reputation for commercial. Residential, not so much. The Sienna, which they put on the old Hades property up in Montclair, almost immediately developed a water, water leak problem and a mold problem. I believe there were lawsuits against Pinnacle on that. Okay, we want to bring that here? It's going to be the same construction, I can guarantee you. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. <laughs> you were saying you were accessible, okay? I know for a fact that I called your office back in December and someone took a message, I'm not going to say who because she, you know, she's a trusted friend, that sort of thing. I know, she, I know you got that message. I never got a phone call from you. I wanted to sit down and have a pleasant lunch with you and actually find out with, with no static, with no white noise, what you were really about. Because I do like to give people an opportunity. Okay? Maybe, you know, I have my friends here. I have Mr. Frank Antonio, Mr. Sheldon, Ms. Higgins is here somewhere. That sort of thing. Mr. Malley couldn't make it. Mr. Reno is here. Okay, and you want to know something? We talk. We, we talk against high density residential development. Okay, and maybe that's a lost cause. All right. I'll tell you something. I have been fighting lost causes all my life, and I'm beginning to enjoy them. I live for them. So, if this thing goes through on Belmont Avenue, or this one that we're going to be that, that the planning board's going to be hearing about on Thursday down on Washington Avenue, or the, the proposals for the, uh, the industrial property down on Main Street. If you get what you want, and these things fall through, I will be the first person to come to you and say, I told you so. Because every once in a while, lost causes get won, and I stand out for that. So are, Thank are you, you against all the redevelopment? I am, I am opposed to high-density residential development. Retail, commercial, wonderful. Down the valley, it's a warehouse is being proposed. But That'd be great. Okay. That'd be I'm great. I look forward to your support on that. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Carmella Flesh from 132 Franklin Street. And you thought I was the evil one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to say, it takes a lot to get him annoyed, but once he goes, <laughs> he goes. So I was unable to make the last meeting because I was working. So the lovely um, PC and G. Switch. Was that discussed at all at the last meeting? It was not discussed. Okay. So I did a little digging. I called PSC and G, and the lovely young lady at PSC and G told me we cannot opt out of anything yet until it is passed. So what they suggested was that we go back to the town and tell the town again that we don't want to switch from our current provider to anybody else. So that's number one. Number two, I've been asking for umpteen meetings about the lovely traffic on Franklin. Has anyone reached out to the county in regards to the people coming across on Franklin onto Magnolia? Anybody? find out and follow up with the traffic department. I mean, I don't necessarily call the county and ask about cars that travel one direction or the next, but I'm sure no, the no, traffic no. department... What, I, what I've asked for is I've asked for someone to, from the county, because obviously the town can't do it because it's a county road. And I understand that. Okay? And, but again, <coughs> something needs to be done. So tell us, can you just tell me what you're looking for there? I, I, mean, I don't want to figure it out. Tell me exactly this way. The chief is here. Traffic department will assist. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you're looking for. I've asked for cameras on the buildings to well, try to... Chief, do we have cameras that we can put on the buildings? Money talks. Right. Right. We don't have them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, don't have, we don't have cameras. Okay. May I continue? Sure. Okay. I've asked for cameras on, the, on buildings to try to catch people making the terms. Unfortunately, I wish we had them, but we don't have them. Okay. Have right. But <laughs> at the former, okay, so the former council, when I asked the former council this, 
The former mayor said to me that would be illegal to put the cameras on the buildings to try to catch people making the turns illegally. So the, the red, mayor, okay. mayor. Well, the red light cameras are no longer. I believe longer. she's speaking of people cutting any other. Thank you. Exactly. Right. We do like monitor this. that. Thank right, no, no, no. And don't. again, we don't really need the county to enforce that. We we actually do that. Okay. Again, okay, I remember from last time, you, it was two meetings ago, maybe you might have made that comparison. Probably. Since, this since, question, then, since then, we've rather than, Again, that just like I said to the other person, rather than coming to us, we only meet every two weeks, and, and asking me if I called the county about the... You can always call the police department, and they, you they, call they me. send a traffic detail that's out fine. the same day. Okay. okay. I don't that's want fine. you to wait two weeks I will to get ask back us me. about what the chief would yeah, do. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> say, you're a good man. You're, you're a you're The chief may even go to lunch. You know, and again, don't get me wrong. We do like this town. Okay? We've we lived here for town. exactly for many years. No one I don't believe I think I can speak for everybody. Nobody is against development. We understand it brings tax revenue in, we understand it brings people in, but this pipe dream that all these people are going to come in and live in these little single fat, single unit or these little compact units and take the subway, the light rail, down into Newark and down into New York is ridiculous. I do not think that's ridiculous. Okay. Let me ask we you. We have the light rail down. Okay. No, no, no. I understand that. I love the light rail. I do not personally drive, so I know the light rail. Okay. Just so you know, Bloomfield, the stop before that, had to put extra trains on for okay. people to ride them. Right. And that, the first stop is Silver Lake's light rail. I think we can capitalize on this a little okay. bit. Okay. Let me ask you this then. Sure. Have you personally ever taken the light rail? I did about three wait, months wait, ago. Wait, wait. Where to? I took it to North Penn Station, I took it to New York City, and back. Okay. Wonderful. And guess what? Just in case, do a little plug for the light rail. For those of you who don't know this, in Silver Lake, the light rail's there. And in less than 15 minutes, you're in North Penn Station for less than $1.60. For about 45 minutes worth of travel time, you're in New York Penn for less than $5. The fact that one bedrooms and studios are going to go right next to it is not a bad idea. Because we might actually attract people that work in Hoboken, work in Newark, work in New York City. And I think that's a viable project. I do not think that's a pipe dream as well. No, no, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. I understand that, but it is a pipe dream. I'm telling you this. The when the developers came, you know, many months ago, I asked them point blank. I asked them that same question: if they ever took the light rail all the way down. When you asked me the question, I said yes. No, no. Can I please finish? Well, actually, yeah, you can't finish. It's Thank about you. Time. Good. Okay. So the developers didn't take the light rail, and again, I. I just keep, can't emphasize this enough. It's not the fact that we're against redevelopment and developing businesses. Putting more people in this town is a horrible, horrible idea because of the fact it's not going to happen. And yes, you may get a few people, and that's great. But the numbers that I think you they gave you, I think are so far exaggerated that it's not going to be good for this town. Okay, I and need I, you to wrap up this question. Again, and again, I see we're still working on the whole respect thing. With I'm you. not working on it. I'm being very respectful. No, no, no. You're really not. You're tr really, truly not. I see your little fan club is here. I think Let when me time runs no, out no, and, and I try Let me and politely give you right. a wrap up, you think I'm rude. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. I understand that. And that's great. I wish so many people were here at every single meeting. I would love to hear, I would love to see this, and I'm not just speaking of you in general, I'm speaking of the entire council. When people get up and speak, you do not give them your full attention. Who's looking Ms. down? Question, I do need Please. you to wrap up now. I really do need I, you to wrap then up. Then stop interrupting them. I'm just trying to get you to wrap up. I, I understand You're that. You're way over your time. So I've been very polite and I've been very respectful. I do need you to sum up that. No, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Thank you, Mr. Frantz Antonio. Phyllis Frantz Antonio, Prospect Avenue. I'm out. To uh -oh. Mr. Morrell, I didn't make last meeting. You mentioned 
that why didn't anybody complain about the contamination over by the path mark when it was path mark when it was a parking lot. That ground was not disturbed. It was a parking lot. When you disturb the ground with all those contaminants in it, it's going to go into the air. I don't care if you encapsulate it. I don't care what you do with it. It's going to go through the ground at some point, some of it. It's not good. You can't put housing on top of ground like that. And if it has to be cleaned up, it's got to be cleaned up by the developer, not by us. The developer has to pay for it. And I'd like to see him live there. I'd like to see the developer live in one of those units if it ever goes up. They all want to come here and build all these high rise and do all that, but nobody wants to live here. They want to go live in another town where they got their sprawling one family home and then dump on Belleville. I, I believe in having development, but I think we need retail. Not more housing. I was over in the lake not so long ago. You cannot go over Franklin Avenue. You can, the traffic is horrendous. We were at the light, I'd say, for a good five to ten minutes, because you can't get over Franklin Avenue. Franklin so, yeah. so please, reconsider what you're doing. Thank you. Anybody else? Ma'am, the back. Cecil Wells, 8 Beach Let's get back to the light we on. My daughter-in-law takes that light wheel every day, okay? There's no parking. Okay? There's no parking over there for light wheel. The, the, the uh, Bluefields has parking. They do. Okay? But then you've got to go park in Bluefield, pay for the parking up there, and take the light wheel yeah. down. Are we going to have parking for the light wheel? Yes. Yes. And where will it be? So, it's a great question. Are you done with your commenting? No. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. And this is a perfect example. And I didn't know you were going to ask this question. I just, you know, uh, the township are professionals that negotiate these these pilots uh, and these developer agreements. The developers have agreed to invest $125,000 into Silver Lake, and a substantial portion of that is going to find or rehabilitate a lot that's going to be a commuter parking lot that Belleville will then get the revenue from because we're going to meter it. So I agree with you. I know Belleville residents that drive to Bluefield, park their car, hop on the light rail. The first stop is Silver Lake, and then go to and then go to work. So we do have, as part of our developer agreement, was $125,000 committed, correct, Mr. Tucci? Mr. Tucci? $125,000? $125,000 committed that's going to rehabilitate and or find a parking lot. We've already been in, in conversations with the parking lot owner. We're going to rehabilitate that parking lot. We're going to put a meter there. The township's going to get revenue from it, and we will offer parking for the light route. Thank you. That's good. It is good. It is good. That's, that's the partnerships that we get. <coughs> Church Terrace in Belleville, of course. Um, I just want to say that I think it's a great idea, number one, that there's going to be parking for the light rail. And the light rail itself, getting to New York, I did it personally for several years. I lived on Belmont, Belmont Avenue when I first moved here, and I worked downtown in New York. It took me 45 minutes, door to desk. Wonderful. It was absolutely crazy. People thought I was nuts coming from New Jersey. And when I told them that I... It took me less time than it took them, and they lived in New York. So I think it's wonderful. When I moved to Church Terrace, the problem with the light rail is the parking. <coughs> but for me, I'm happy because now when it snows, I'm not going to have to get on the road and drive to my job. Mm -hmm. I can hop on the light rail, and I can be yeah. at work. No Thank you. Thank you so much. One thing we do have to do. Fix the potholes. That's part of it. That's part of it. That's part of it. They're, they're, they're going to fix the surrounding streets that are there. They're going to put a blinking crosswalk there. New fence, new meters, new lining, new everything. It's all going to be there, and we get the revenue from it. It's a great, it's a great deal. Anybody else? Man in the back. Um, well, I am a millennial, and I have taken a light rail since the city, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, my issue is parking. I live at the very tail end. General Street and can't park in it at night because the people, all the streets that are to the left, if you're going down Passaic Ave, heading into Nutley, all the streets to the left, they've already been made permit parking for Belleville residents. And I want to see if the streets on the right can be better too. Um, you know, I go to school and I work at ShopRite part time, so I don't get home sometimes until like 10 o'clock and it's really hard to find parking. Sure. 
That's it. So again, I'm going to tell you the same thing to everybody else. I'm glad you're here. We want more millennials to show up to our council meetings. But as a millennial, you could always just email or communicate with us, and I would get it right to the chief. And all I can do is promise you that it'll go forward to the chief. I will promise you the, the chief will deal with the traffic department, and then we're going to get an assessment on whether or not that's feasible or not, and then we would be more than willing to, to take some action. Okay, because I, mean, I have actually spoken to the police, and they basically said to me that they couldn't do anything because the street wasn't permitted. Right. So then I then called um, here, and I spoke to the clerk, and she said the best thing to do is to come in. Sure. No, it's, it's, uh, I'm glad you're here because the chief is sitting right there. You feel it's not the residents to take up the bar? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, we, actually, we, 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 we would do an assessment of that, ma'am. We would do an assessment of that. And then we'll so I'm, I'm glad you're here. For an audience. That's Great. Thank you. So I, I am glad you're here. Now the chief is here. And now we'll, we're going to get an update from the chief soon. I promise you that. Thank you for being here. Anybody else before we close? Motion. Motion to close public. Second. Motion made and second to close public participation. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosavelli? Yes. Catania? Yes. Reziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Rogel? Yes. Lulberg? Yes. yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. Resolutions. We're going to need some. Uh, we need a pull. Uh, pull. Pull. 11. 11. 12. Uh, hold on. What's the deal with 11? Uh, we're going to table it. 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 We're going to table it.
By the way, his father is also a, uh, one of Belleville's finest police officers. I, I just wanted to acknowledge him and, and ask you, Kelly, somewhere around, you know, after April, because I guess he's got to go to Maryland for the region. I think we have a, a resolution yeah. here to yeah. be presented in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, I mean, he, he's a proclamation. proclamation, yeah, so we can it's there. We have. Yeah, we'll take care of that, so. <laughs> so he's also a, a neighbor of mine, too, so yeah, I, so I join in with that. Oh. And uh, he's one of our... The father is one of our fellow police officers. Yes. So. Okay, so let's uh, make a motion to approve that. Motion. Second. Motion made second. To approve resolution 15, clerk call roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Reziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jim Wilbur? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. New business. Good. I, I, I do see that there's a bunch of police officers here. We, we did today vote, and, and after a long process, uh, which was actually an easy process, I thought. I thought it went very well. It was a pleasant process. It was very pleasant, according to the manager negotiates all of our contracts with the PBA union directly. We had a very pleasant meeting. There were really, uh, it took time only because attorneys go back and forth, but by no means did a delay uh, on your part or our part, and we're, we're very proud of the good contract that we got. And I appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye.